after the mesmerizing speech from Arna, we are ready to roll on to our next speaker, who has come all the way from the US, and we thank him for taking the time out to come here. Tom Sajiomo is the president and CEO of the DG3 Group. DG3 Group is providing worldwide visual communication solutions in strategic geographical markets including New York, London, Hong Kong and Manila. A graduate from the New York City Technical College, Tom is a well-respected leader in the graphic communications industry. Prior to joining DG3 in 2009, he served as President and CEO of Agfa Graphics North American Division, where in addition to many initiatives in the offset community business, he led the launch of the digital printing and wide format inkjet suite of products. <coughs> Prior to Agfa, Tom was President and CEO of Lastra America Corporation, a company which he founded and grew to 100 billion US dollars in revenues. Thomas was recently honored by the Printing Industries Alliance with the Power of Communications Award. In his first session, Thomas is going to talk to us about the commercial and technological trends in both USA and India. He will draw parallels and give pointers for the future. He will be interacting and getting views from Fred Unawala of Comart and Tushar Dote of Dote Offset and Iqbal Kirodawala of Printline Reproductions. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to please welcome Thomas Sakyo. say, mesmerizing, a wonderful speaker, and clearly a, um, a, a hero, I think, here in uh, Mumbai. So my wife and I will be looking to see his show this evening. My task, I believe, is a bit more quiet, although passionate. We need to get back to printing. <laughs> So let's see. So, sir, we have no. Um, <coughs> Good. So, before I begin, I would like to clearly state that I love printing, and printing will not go away. It will remain a key element of the marketing mix. It is tactile, it is portable, in fact it is even on demand. You take a book, you can go to page 50, to page 1, to page 200, it is in fact on demand. So what I will say will give you pause, because some of the information that I will share with you will lead you to believe that I am the devil, that I really do not like print, and that I wish print to go away. So again, I state, this is not the case, but I assure you that print will change now and in the future. So I make my point here that technology, new technology, classically coexists coexist with traditional technology, not forever, but for some period of time. And a good example in our world today is if anyone here is in the catalog business, printing catalogs, you'll know that it used to be that retail outlets would print huge catalogs and in American parlance, spray and pray. Print many and give catalogs to everyone. So that's traditional technology. Today, catalogs still exist, although we are not printing as many. And catalogs today are used to drive potential customers to the website where the transaction takes place. So catalogers today, using data, suggest we're not going to print two million catalogs. Maybe we will print one million <coughs> catalogs. And we will, by the use of intelligence, send those catalogs to people who are likely to purchase what is in that catalog. So there's an example of the traditional technology living 
with the new technology. So once again, I love print, but I assure you, print will change. So, my intention today is to share with you what has happened in America. It's a huge market, but it is changing rapidly. And what we'll try to do is draw parallels to the Mumbai market. Now, I believe there is a possibility that the Indian market for print will leapfrog, that it won't take exactly the same course as the American market or the European market, because people are smart and they learn from history, and maybe there will be some leapfrogging going on. So the change could be even more intense here. I will then share my company's programs, how we are dealing with this change. Now our company in US dollars is about 135 million US dollars. It's big. But I assure you, every single day it is changing. So it will not be a commercial about my company. It will simply, once again, help you to think how you can manage the change in your business. Output to outcome. When I first met Prashant, it was in Europe in, uh, in the spring of last year, and I used these words, outcome versus output, and Prashant came to me and he said, could you come to India and give a speech? And I said, maybe, I, maybe, it would be a good idea. And then nine months later, I heard from Prashant, and here I am. So let me stop for a moment and say, Prashant, wherever you are, thank you for the invitation. Fred, Sanjay, the entire Print Summit Committee, I'm honored to be here speaking to this group. Okay, so, um, and change, change, change. I want to reinforce that as business owners and business leaders, you have a very important task, and that is defining reality. If you're the, the boss, so to speak, if you can define reality only then, can you deal with reality? Okay, so let me talk about two companies before we get into data. We're gonna show you a lot of fact, and then you can draw your conclusions. Okay, two companies. Both had their beginnings in the 1800s, the late 1800s. Both, up until recently, were thought leaders, technology leaders in their fields. Brilliant, brilliant companies. They plowed enormous amounts of money into research and development. And today, one is booming and one is bankrupt. Booming and bankrupt. Why? What was different? And so the companies, the first one, the one that's booming is IBM, and the one that is bankrupt. And I have many dear friends at Eastman Kodak Company. And I am a very large user. We spend nearly one million US dollars a year with Kodak. So I love Kodak, but Kodak is bankrupt today. And why, I can only speculate, but one question would be leadership. Another question would be courage. And the third issue is the definition of reality. Well, I worked at Kodak. I worked and worked at Kodak, and it was the beginning of the revolution of CTP in our world. And I would listen to the boys and girls on the other side of the business, the, con the consumer business, Remember those little yellow boxes of film? And the answer was, don't worry, film will be around for a long time. But how could it be? Digital technology is here. And their answer was, yes, but what about India? And more importantly, what about China? There are over one billion people in China, and not many of them have cameras. So why don't we figure out how to get cameras into everyone's hands in China, and for every camera we know that three or four rolls of film will be purchased each year. And so it's a brilliant thought. And what happened? Leapfrog. It never got to three or four rolls. It went right from not too many cameras in the country of China to all digital cameras. And today, Kodak will be They'll come out of bankruptcy, which is good. When I worked at Kodak, 14 billion US dollars. 
That was the turnover. When they emerged from bankruptcy, three billion. So the business has vanished. It's incredible. Okay, so printing. Printing will be around for a long time, as I said. The early, early thoughts, there are many people who claim the invention of printing and so on. The five stores of discs were found a long time ago, a long time ago, and in Crete. Small discs, thought to be maybe the first vestige of a printing press. And then came Gutenberg. And indeed, Gutenberg changed the world. It moved us from an oral society to one where you could document fact and stories and so on. And in fact, the Renaissance, you would say Gutenberg helped drive the Renaissance. So all good stuff. In terms of invention, we heard earlier, printing press, one of the 10 top inventions of the world. There's many lists, people speculate about the top 10 inventions. So there's medicine, that's usually very high, in particular vaccinations, very important. There's computers, there's the internet, there's many of them. But I will say, every list I have seen, the printing press is on that top 10 list, so it's very powerful. So, a bit about India. Coming here, by the way, I am not an expert on India, and I will never claim to be, but I did a little bit of research on the Indian market. So this was more for me, and, and you guys probably know this, of course, but a lot of people here, 1.2 billion people, and it's growing, which is very interesting. The GDP, we were talking yesterday at lunch, <coughs> GDP of 5 to 7% a year, magnificent. And yet, one of my colleagues here in India was saying, it's not enough, it needs to be 9%. Where I come from, if we can get 2% GDP, we are happy. We'd like three or four. So the industry, saw, certainly, certainly, GDP is growing. And classically, you would say that if GDP grows, then printing will grow. Remember that thought, just for a moment. And literacy is reasonably high in India. I believe it's 75 or so percent and continuing to grow. So in the industry, we know, again, there are many facts depending on who you speak to, but roughly 160,000 printing establishments in India, 200,000 printing presses. We heard earlier, 75 percent or so are family-owned businesses. And there's lots of employment uh, driven by the printing industry. Newspapers, incredible, 77,000, again, family owned. And more than China, there are more copies distributed in India than in China. Magnificent. Packaging, we'll talk about in a minute. Packaging is an inter interesting segment because you cannot wrap the internet around the product. And as consumerism grows, packaging will grow. But take care because there are lots of commercial printers that are saying, ah, commercial printing is tough. Let me jump into packaging. And with that comes competition and lower prices and so on. So in a sense, it's very, there's no place to hide. And then digital printing we'll talk about in a moment but it is a technological wonder that can help us all do better. So, let's talk about the print markets of the world. And there's lots of them here, and I am not going to drive uh, everyone crazy with lots of facts. However, let's just look at a couple of the, the countries here. Here is the United States, and this is basically a look back to 2009 and forward to 2014. And so, suffice to say, the United States is 198 billion, it's big, and if you look two or three years ahead, it's shrinking. And so the message here is, in all of the developed economies, the printing industry is shrinking. And you can pick them all. You can take the US, you can take Japan, you can take Germany, all of the developed economies, it's shrinking. China is growing, for sure. India is growing. So the message is that developed economies, print once again, is shrinking and will continue to shrink. 
So then segments. Where are the safe segments? And once again, if you look, packaging is growing on a global basis, for sure. And newspapers, if they are shrinking, because even though newspapers will not go away, their utilization is changing. Newspapers as a vehicle for breaking news, it's wrong. Because by the time it's printed, the world has spun again, and it's different. So newspapers will continue, but not in their original form of, let's open the newspaper to see what happened, while we slept, what happened. So newspapers generally will shrink, and on and on. So commercial printing, roughly flat, but it's only because it's growing here in India, it's growing in China, but the rest of the world, the developed economies, it's shrinking. Packaging, as I said, is growing. So once again, it depends on where you are in your business, but in most of the segments, there's challenge. So how do we print? Lithography continues to be the largest, the largest way we put ink on paper. And if you look at, in 2011, lithography was not quite 50%. This is a global basis and it's shrinking to a little bit more than 40% if you look out to 2016. Everything else is about static except digital printing. And digital printing is growing from roughly 13% to 20% by 2016. Right? So, um, one comment by the way, I can arrange, there's lots of fact here, and for those of you who are data junkies if you will, I can arrange with Prashant to have some of this information sent to you. All right, so, no problems to, uh, to take copious notes, we can have some of this information sent to you. Okay, and so in India it's a little different, it's a little different. Um, Pira says that 60% of the output is driven by offsets. This is an important chart, and it's again, this is American data, American data. And I'm not suggesting that it will be perfectly the same here versus America. But it used to be that if the economy grew, one could be reasonably comfortable that the printing industry would grow. And so this chart here, uh, if it goes back to 1985, and it says, here is the economy, the American economy, GDP, and here is printing. And so in 1985 through 1990 through 1995, it was pretty easy to forecast. You listen to the government say, the economy will grow at 3%, so you can make your forecast, printing will grow 3%, and on and on and on. But look what happened in the late 90s. There was a divergence, a divergence that will never, ever return never return to GDP tracking the uh, printing tracking GDP. And so here it is, and here is the economy. It continued to grow with bumps along the way. Here's a recession period, here's a recession period. But look what happened to print output. It continued to go down, go down, and then of course in the 2008 period when the world changed forever, it really went down. And it continues to go down. And we'll talk in a moment about the drivers. Why is this happening? But this is a significant chart. Because remember, we said that the Indian economy is growing at seven, nine, six. It's growing. But if this is a shadow of what might be, it could say, be careful, that you will not see the same growth in print. It's a thought. So this is simply a picture. This is the again a US story, but growth, 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 and then off the cliff it went. And it's growing a little bit now, but not enough to matter, and it will never, never get to these periods again. Okay, this is another interesting piece of fact. It says that the population, again, USA statistics. The population is growing to 50 to 182 million people, and in 2010, roughly 300, 300 million people.
and then GDP, again growth, growth, and then printing shipments from 123 billion, billion US dollars, 85 billion. So down it goes. And then employment in the industry, not quite half, but it's down significantly. The number of establishments from 40 to 45, 45,000 establishments.